Um, all right. Uh, hey, everybody. Uh, glad you all can make it um, and uh, excited to talk to you all. Let's uh, get started. Um, so yeah, my name is, is Scott Massey. I'm the head of product and marketing for Morphed. Uh, I joined uh, the team in January. Uh, prior to that, um, I was with Pantheon for about a decade. Uh, from the very beginning, ran support, customer success, docs, DevRel, everything sort of after the signature for a while. And then I um, moved to before the signature and helped um, marketing and sales. And my last role was running our global go-to-market. Um, and uh, yeah, so I'm super excited uh, to be uh, on the Morph team working on um, cool stuff and personalization and uh, some of the uh, sessions you might have seen earlier uh, about AI and that sort of thing. Um, uh, Naveen is also a colleague and a coworker. Just due to logistics, he couldn't make it, um, but he's um, an awesome developer on our team that uh, that uh, builds awesome websites and, as far as Drupal goes, really um, knows his onions, as the British people say. Maybe Kiwis say that too. I don't know. I know Americans don't say it. Um, but this American, uh, he said something pretty famous like years ago. Um, this guy's John Wanamaker, and he's a um, uh, sort of the forefather of marketing. And uh, he had this quote that like, half the money I spend on advertising is wasted. The trouble is I don't know which half. And that's why he has his hand to his temple and he's glaring at you because he's trying to figure this out. And um, even though uh, technology has advanced rapidly and um, there's all sorts of new tech out there, um, modern uh, site owners and marketers still struggle with these questions that are kind of phrased in a different way about like, kind of like um, at a high level, like is this, is this site working or is my marketing working? What messaging is resonating? Like where are, where are we losing users and customers and where could we um, improve our, our marketing? And, um, and I think it's, it's difficult. Uh, it's made more difficult in today's world because of this, um, like this omni-channel, uh, like omni-channel marketing structure that we work in, where there's um, not just a website, but maybe a portfolio of websites, and there's devices, and then there's iOS apps and Android apps, and all these sort of things that kind of each have their own like visibility into the customer journey. So measuring them is hard. It's almost like sometimes there's a almost too much to measure, and um, it's hard to tell like what's really correlated with like customer happiness or or value. Um, and I think like segmentation and things like that, there's all these cool tools and there's this whole MarTech industry that's out there. But a lot of this requires the resources that really only put, um, uh, really are only accessible to, to enterprise level companies. And um, that's kind of, kind of why I wanted to talk about this because I think um, there's a couple things with a uh, couple advancements in um, Google's products that sort of... Uh, uh, allow us to make use of analytics in a different way and um, actually uh, sort of uh, get the same benefit that maybe a company that has millions of dollars of budget to spend on, you know, data science and, you know, um, advanced kind of MarTech stuff. So yeah, I'm here to kind of talk about analytics. And I know what, you know, the troublemakers in the back are thinking, you're thinking like analytics are boring and stupid and I didn't even want to come to this one. I meant to come to the other room. So why do I have to listen to analytics, um, uh, the last session of the last day, like, um, why are you subjecting me this, to this? And so I at least want to posit to you that um, these three things are true, that um, Looker and GA4 together, whether you like them or not, um, can help you understand your users better, um, that you can kind of think of it in a different way now. You can actually do your marketing and your customer journeys and your domain knowledge first and plug that into analytics and be able to not just look at a bunch of canned reports, but you can sort of um, analyze like real sort of uh, action and actual sort of uh, work that you're doing and seeing what the results are. And um, paired with like face-to-face -face and customer development and like um, developing hypotheses, you can kind of test them and create this virtual life cycle where they feed into each other and the data you get gives you more hypotheses to test and you can test them on real people and sort of um, just gradually get better and hopefully fight above your weight class and uh, compete with the, you know, the big shots. Um, and 
Uh, I think this is kind of happening, like this, this is happening with Google, not necessarily because like <laughs> having worked with uh, GCP and Google for a long time, like I have the, I always have the sense that like they don't build anything for you, they build it for themselves. And if it works for you, that's kind of like a happy coincidence for them. Um, and so I think that like this is something that matters to them, like they need to kind of understand like where users are, you know, for, for their own sort of uh, survival. And so um, in this one sense, we're kind of aligned on this, like website owners and agencies that are involved and uh, marketing teams and Sundar Pichai from Google are all kind of looking at the same kind of things and have the same goals here for this, for this uh, talk. So I want to talk about GA4, um, Looker, um, and how to put it all together with Drupal. Um, I don't have anything to say about AI, I just wanted to be cool, so I put it up there. Um, uh, so yeah, uh, so GA4, um, like as I was preparing this, it, it resonated like how much GA4 is kind of like the Drupal 7 to 8 uh, conversion. Um, it's, it's a pretty big sea change for Google, and so if you've logged into your analytics, you've probably seen this countdown to when they're going to lift and shift it for you if you don't do it yourself, um, just because the kind of the under the the architecture of um, what was called well universal analytics or I think officially it was like called like web plus app or something like that is is changing significantly enough to where it's it's a lift and shift and they'll do it for you but if you have custom stuff in there it may break um, so I wanted to just kind of describe kind of the meaningful like what I think are kind of the important and relevant things that are changing here um, one is the tracking, like Google Analytics originally had this concept of users that had sessions. These sessions were a bunch of page views and that's kind of, you know, the, the main sort of nouns that were involved here in this kind of process. And like since then, obviously the thing, the aforementioned channels and um, applications and multiple sites and um, devices and things like that, and plus that content itself is much more dynamic and personalized and a lot of stuff going on. So like they had to kind of update the antiquated model for how stuff works. So now they have this concept of data streams and a data stream is, is um, a sort of a, a place to, to ship data to Google Analytics or wherever, wherever you need it to go. Um, but you set up these data streams and then you can aggregate them and, um, and uh, analyze them. Um, and so they also have this concept of mixed reporting identity where they're attempting to, to be able to track one user across those different data streams, across devices and things like that. So you can measure like a single user as they you know, switch between mobile and, and desktop or, or whatnot. Um, a lot of this stuff is still like in the works and sort of black boxy at this point, but um, that's uh, some of what's, what's going on that I think is relevant to us. Um, the user uh, interface is also changed significantly, which I'll get into because um, whereas GA used to kind of come with a bunch of standard kind of canned reports, it's much more um, looker-ish, like the, the, um, you don't get those same reports, but you're sort of encouraged at this point to, to um, use the kind of looker user interface to build your own reports. And it's, it's pretty powerful, but it's not necessarily... Um, what people who've used GA before are, are used to. It's kind of a new paradigm for reporting. Um, but it does give a non-technical marketer a lot more power to do all sorts of stuff, to have these uh, events, you know, things that happen on the website that they want to track that's relevant to their domain or whatever, and be able to, to ship them to, to Google Analytics or Looker or kind of wherever you want to. Um, and yeah, so the data model is kind of built up the, of these events. Like a page load is an event now, whereas it used to be kind of like a page load. So now it's one of many events, like one of hundreds of events that exist now in GA4, GA4 but can also be kind of, uh, you can create your own and add them in there. So it's very much open-ended to be uh, a cool tracking tool. Um, and then finally, like Google is committed um, by uh, 2024 to not use cookies anymore. So that's also kind of a black box as to what's going to happen, but it seems to be centering around this consent mode kind of thing. So, um, uh, like, they, there were updates kind of required to, to move forward with that initiative. So, um, the reception across the board uh, has been um, pretty 
solid uh, and stable. Um, this poor woman, I think, is hyperventilating. I don't think she's throwing up, but I think it's taken her breath away. Um, and uh, hopefully she'll, she'll adapt and be okay there. Um, I think like in the words of, uh, you know, kind of tech evangelist Kelsey Hightower, like tech is less about learning a specific tool as it is like the willingness to learn a different tool when that time comes. And I think if, especially we Drupal people, if we embrace end of life as a way of life, like these sort of changes, uh, we can kind of look at the benefits of them. And, and I think like in general, um, moving forward uh, with GA4 is, is a good thing for us. That being said, like it's a means to an end. I have no particular affinity for Google Analytics or, and I'm not like a SEM guy or anything like that. Um, but on the other hand, Looker, I do like. I've been a fan of Looker forever. I've used it um, a lot over the last 10 years. Um, my prior company, uh, hundreds of users depended on it. Uh, hundreds of my fellow coworkers depended on it from accounting to operations to support to um, sales and marketing. It's a, it's a super tool. It existed on its own for a while, then it was acquired by uh, Google and has been through some branding iterations. Uh, but now it's kind of pretty well integrated into um, their, their marketing suite. And it's kind of like built on, it's almost like an MVC sort of format, but it has these models and views. And uh, it's very kind of DevOps friendly in the large of scheme, scheme of things. You can um, it's versionable and you can commit files and create uh, the initial um, database views. And from there, uh, you can expose those to uh, the Looker users and they can build all kinds of reports and visualizations and stuff. Um, I also think like dashboards are kind of good for like for agencies and for, you know, stakeholders. Like I, I recommend dashboards. Like I think, you know, you'll always make more money if the guy signing the check or the woman signing the check has a dashboard as opposed to a CLI. So I think like dashboards are a positive thing because uh, and and Looker makes them very customizable and editable and kind of iterable, iter iteratable. Um, uh, yeah, and so like it does BI really well and it scales, you know, you can aggregate across multiple sites, across a portfolio. Um, uh, it hooks into uh, BigQuery if you want to do data warehousing or uh, data warehousing or um, machine learning kind of stuff. Um, but that being said, like it's not an ETL, like you kind of have to get it into a format that that Looker can read stuff, uh, either in a MySQL database or uh, one of their connectors, which I'll show you. And um, and I think like it probably re requires someone with at least like the willingness to be like mid-level, like MySQL competent, like it uses um, its own LookML kind of modeling language and you kind of have to learn that. But again, I think Drupal people are kind of used to like the abstracting of the database connection uh, in code. So it's not, um, it's not super complicated. Um, you get all these connectors with it. Uh, you can hook into Google Analytics and that kind of stuff um, off the bat. So you don't really need to, to have um, a whole lot of code to do that. That's pretty much out of the box. And then there's partner um, connectors and custom stuff that you can build. And the reports, obviously, it has all the stuff that you'd kind of expect. But again, since you're um, kind of in bed with Google on this, you get access to their intelligence around building maps and time series and stuff like that. So it's uh, out of the box. It's pretty powerful. Um, the Drupal side of things is pretty straightforward. Uh, like you can, Google Tag Manager may get you 100% of the way there. If you um, have that module installed, you can install the container ID and start um, play, creating events and placing events and start uh, your own kind of analytics. Um, but there, you can take it further. Uh, you could pipe data through the data layer, which is kind of a good way to take stuff out of Chrome and ship it wherever you want. And uh, we use it for personalization. We use um, a lot of these tools for personalization because we can sort of grab what's going on, um, you know, behavioral data and uh, create actions based on, on that and, uh, you know, show people content that we think that they want to see. So um, there's some other links there that, are, that might be kind of helpful for, uh, for you to look at and get a feel for it. So let's put it all together and I'll show you a couple examples um, that uh, I have here. So like marketers have these funnels um, and you know, uh, funnels uh, are ways of gauging user interest. And at the top of the funnel, you have people that maybe 
interested in a product but have no idea what it really does. And at the bottom of the funnel, they're maybe comparing pricing of one, your competitor to you. So where people are in the funnel matters to marketers and creating content that's relevant to each stage in the funnel is important. And like one of the cool things you can do is um, you can uh, sort of expose uh, content as meta, uh, taxonomies as meta tags, um, put that in the page. And then when someone opens that page or, or uh, opens something related to that stage in the funnel, you can track that and you can ship that to Looker and then you can run reports that um, can show like in this case, obviously we're mainly maybe a little bit too focused on the top of the funnel, like in discovery. And maybe we want to get more in deep because there's users that are possibly falling off because uh, they need to see, um, you know, more comparative stuff or more uh, in the consideration phase before moving on there. Um, and this is something that like once it's set up, it's pretty easy to build and you can add all sorts of dimensions to see like by region and that sort of stuff as well. Same thing with um, whatever taxonomies you can expose, like if it's if you're selling merchandise or something like that, or if your content has its own kind of taxonomies, you can expose those as well and be able to see um, see where users are at or what their interests are in or what writers are more effective than others and that sort of thing. Um, and so like I also wanted to sort of explain demonstrate the simplicity of this like it's uh, it's, it is something that really a marketer just has to kind of maybe have it explained to them in, in one sort of slow session, but after that it's pretty easy to pick up on. Um, uh, and I wanted to sort of pretend, like have a thought experiment that we are selling bicycles and we're running the sale on bikes. And so we're gonna create this marketing email and we're gonna send it to some customers. And uh, then we want them to click on a landing page. It's gonna show them a bunch of bikes, they're gonna pick one. They're going to add it to the cart and they're going to buy it. So it's pretty simple. The marketer prepares the email, they get ready to send it, and now they want to create a funnel report to be able to track that. So um, what they can do is uh, uh, they can set up the page the way they want it to, like focus on the right side where they're actually doing the navigation. On the left side, there's just some debugging stuff that's showing the tags and the events that are, that are happening. Um, and we'll get into what to do with that in a second. But so they're going to uh, navigate and duplicate the desired ideal customer journey there. Um, they're going to go to this bike and maybe it's on sale and they're going to click on it. They're going to load the product detail page and they're going to say, yeah, I want to buy that stupid bike. And um, then they're going to go to checkout. They're going to add it to the cart and that's the purchase journey. You know, they're going to do the sign in and, and go through the transaction there. And you'll see on the left, what we end up with is we end up with those four URLs. And those four URLs uh, duplicate, they replicate exactly what we went through. The view the page, view the bike, give me the bike, pay for the bike. And so now all the marketer really has to do is to figure out how to codify those into reporting. And you can do that by, you know, debugging. You can do this by kind of common sense by looking at the URL. But if we look at each stage, we see there's a page view event because that's what GA4 is built on. And it has those words in there. It's that URL. Um, so we remember that. We go to the next one and then there's another event that's a page view for the product detail page with that item in there. So maybe we grab that item instead and we save that. And then we have two more events that are basically the add to cart and the um, checkout page. So we take that information that we've copied and pasted somewhere and we build a report. We build a funnel exploration report and we go down here to the steps and we just basically recreate those in steps in, in Looker or in Google Analytics, one being the landing page. Um, you'll see on the right-hand side that we go from 100%, like all users, we're using um, one of Google's demo sites because there's real traffic being simulated on there. So we'll add that first page in there and we'll see that uh, it begins to get filtered. Um, we add the second uh, step in there that shows the product detail page and we see that it gets, um, further filtered down as, uh, it's, as it's actually running the report on you know, existing uh, data. Uh, we add the rest of it in there. We're adding the shopping basket, the shopping cart. Um, and then we go to the checkout, which is the final stage there. Um, we're, we're in, hopefully, hopefully at this point, we've repl replicated kind of the entire desired transaction that we go through here. And we'll plug in that last filter there to the signin.html page. 
And, and that's basically it. We apply that and we end up with this funnel report that shows like where people fell off at each stage in the step, where carts were abandoned, where they can start begin to optimize. And like literally it's like a five or 10 minute report that can be run for every campaign to kind of see what's going on. Um, beyond that, you can add dimensions. If you want to like, I'm a, I'll add campaign here to see like maybe what happened organically to filter out that, to see how effective really the marketing really was. Um, so I can go in there and I can see like what's direct versus organic versus referral. Um, uh, if I'm using a particular URL, I could filter like that uh, according to that as well. Um, I can also add in these segments like customer segmentation is 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 hard. It's an it's an art slash science, but um, this uses some common models of like recency and frequency, or you can create your own based on purchase amount or existing users versus new users. And that's built in, and so you can do that kind of segmentation and modeling and see how your campaigns perform against um, uh, in those situations as well. Um, so uh, in summary, you see now he's elated because we've actually made a dent in the omni-channel complexities, um, the marketing, uh, the measurement obstacles, and the audiences and segmentations. Um, and he's happy now. Um, and you're happy now too because you realized you were wrong. I'm not a stupid idiot talking about analytics. Analytics are fire, like the American kids say. I don't know if you say that, but Americans do. Um, and so, uh, so yeah, getting back to the points, the, the, the hypotheses that I made, I think that they can help. Uh, GA is at a very usable point uh, for teams uh, at this point. Um, you just have to kind of get a sense of how Google does things uh, and sort of what their mindset is for how they build their products. And it, once it clicks, it makes sense. Um, I think that like the tracking and marketing, like if you're doing it in real life, it's now much easier to bring that into your analytics and get reports the way that marketers want them that are effective and usable. And um, I think for those teams that are fighting for budget that are trying to do more with less or trying to build out their web portfolio or their marketing portfolio, um, the more websites can give them actionable information, um, the more successful they'll be. And uh, this is, uh, I think, a good way to do it. That's it, folks. Thank you. I, I love using Looker. I've used it for years. And the stuff that I did for this was pretty simple. But um, you can do a lot of cool stuff. And uh, yeah, like back in the day, at, at one point, Pantheon was using, you know, it, it's a way to get out of Excel, like the millions of Excel files and, um, you know, views, like we used all of those. And um, we sort of had a corporate initiative to unify on, on Looker. And uh, when everyone's using the same tool, uh, then it's great. Like there's no, you know, data issues. And like you're sort of, you become almost like organizationally committed to data validity and keeping it up. Uh, I think that they like i think with with google you with acquisitions that i know about you stand a fair chance of it going nowhere um and i think that in this case they've really adopted it uh so i think it's going to be how visualization works for google like i think it's going to be their default status and, and um you know i think uh, uh i i don't know if i would expect it to change like it hasn't changed a whole lot for me like it's basically look the way it was when it was its own thing um but I think running custom reporting and things like that, like they're you know they're pretty uh, uh, agnostic about customers. You know, like they're sort of like we're going to do it our way. It's going to be more difficult, but we think it's better. And I sort of agree with them in this case. It's not like learning a new mar you know markup line or modeling language is tricky, and someone won't be able to do it. But I think like if you at least get it started, there's a lot you can do with Looker. Uh, is that a double negative? I'm thumbs down on the sucks. Uh, I, th I think, you know, I, like I said, analytics are like the way that it's done is getting better. I think that there's increasing value, I think, for me in it. It's like, okay, now that it's not just looking at page views, and, and it's been that way for a while, but as it's gotten easier to sort of like wrap my head around like, oh, these key value pairs can be kind of placed anywhere now and now I can just, you know, 
I don't need to look at any other values other than the ones that matter for me and just start tracking that. Like I think the average marketing department can get pretty far with this. And get with it. Um, yeah, I, I've been terrible about repeating the question. So um, uh, do I see any big gaps in uh, being able to uh, visualize and analyze what I want to? Um, I, I would say it's pretty fair to say there's not much that I think I couldn't get into there at this point. Like if you go, if you look at my deck and you look at the links to all of the existing dimensions that are in there, it's hundreds. Like it's like looking at api.drupal.org. Like there's a ton of stuff in there. And then being able to do custom stuff, I think it's still like, my concern is that it's still like kind of not super user friendly and you do need someone that's going to like, mark like marketing teams are like a moving train and to stop and say, I'm going to learn a modeling language so I can do analytics. Like a lot of times it's like, eh, page views are fine, you know, and get back to business. But I do think that like with all this, like there are companies that are very successful with this. There's, um, there's actually, <laughs> oddly enough, there was one, the, one of the um, inspirations for me getting interested in this at all was uh, Tableau. Like Tableau has a web team that's running all sorts of like tests on their landing pages and stuff like that. And they do it all with Drupal. Like they're, they have some great Drupal case studies and they were just marketers that dedicated the time to learning this. And so I think it probably existed before, like the ability to report on whatever you want, but it required a lot of hand coding. Now I would say it's close to zero what you could do. It's just the initial time to put into it.